All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. This is the first segment of a new thing we're doing called the Performance Review. We are excited to have you. As we talk a little bit about this, feel free to throw in the chat where you're listening in from. We love seeing uh, just our global reach and where everyone is listening in from today. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would be wonderful. So to get started, my name is Taylor Warner and I'll be the host of this segment. And we've started this new project to help you understand and hear more from our performance advocates and really understand who they are and why we utilize them. So first thing that I want to talk about is what is a performance advocate? So we partner with performance advocates and performance advocates are professionals. They are athletes. They are musicians, um, et cetera. They're big influencers in their communities and in their spaces. And we partner with them so that we can help get a larger audience and so that they can also help bring awareness to doTERRA and the wonderful products that we have to offer. Um, now, how can you use a performance advocate to your advantage? That's a question that we get sometimes. And, and I want to answer it with, with a story because first, first off and foremost, they add credibility because they're known, they're influencers, correct? A lot of people know them in their household names. And so for example, I want to paint this image for you before we get to hear from a very, very special, wonderful guest, Lauren Gibbs, who's joining us today. So I wanna paint this image for you. Uh, the NBA, the National Basketball Association is regarded as the highest league in the world, right? For basketball, there are 450 players per year in the NBA. Now there's a tier in the NBA where they label all-stars. There's only 24 all-stars in this highest level of competition in the world. Two of those all-stars from last year were performance advocates. They're well-known people in our community and those who follow the sport of basketball. And so by name dropping them as, as you're having conversations with friends and family, and if people really don't know about doTERRA, but they know who Donovan Mitchell is, or they know who Mike Conley is, household names in this area and those who follow basketball, it's easy for them to then relate and understand and say, well, gosh, I know those guys wouldn't compromise you know, their, their health or their risk by taking products that are not of the best quality. And so it automatically adds credibility to you as you're teaching them. And so we have the wonderful Lauren Gibbs with us today. Um, she is a silver medalist and she's also a champion. Oh, she's bringing out the bling. There it is. She's got some hardware and she's showing us there. Uh, so Lauren, first, thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited to hear from you and who you are as a person. We appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, I love doTERRA. I've been a performance advocate for I think three years now. It feels like longer. Um, I love the products. I have my humidifier going right now with my adaptive because I just finished training. So that's kind of my post-training routine. Uh, so it's, an, it's great to be here and answer questions and just chat with you guys today. Awesome. I love it. Yep. And that adaptive, that is one of my favorites as well. It's great. So, so Lauren, we, we really do just want to learn and understand a little bit more about who you are, what makes you click. So, so first question, who, who are you, Lauren Gibbs? Whew, how much time do we have? Like, do, <laughs> how, I mean, like, I'm an, I'm a, I've got layers. Um, I think, you know, I think I'm somebody, um, I, I like to say I'm perfectly imperfect. I think a lot of times when you hear uh, athletes my level, uh, you think, you know, we get put on pedestals often, but, you know, I struggle with the same things that people struggle with, self-doubt, uh, sometimes lack of motivation, sometimes lack of consistency. Um, but I'm somebody who loves to travel the world. I love to spend time with my family and friends. I'm a bobsledder. Um, I started bobsledding at 30 years old. I tried it as a joke. And now, you know, seven, almost eight years later, um, I went to the 2018 games and obviously won a silver medal. I'm a world champion. Um, huge fan of, of women supporting women and a huge, huge uh, doTERRA fan. 
I love it. And Lauren, I love that phrase you used, perfectly imperfect. I mean, that describes everyone and everyone can relate yeah. to that. So that's a wonderful phrase that you used. Um, and yeah, you mentioned you did bobsledding as a joke at first, and now you're, you know, a, a medalist two times over. I mean, you're a phenomenal athlete. And so that's, that's a, that's a huge, uh, I guess, shout out to your abilities and, and how hard you've worked as well, uh, to get to where you've gotten. So that's, that's amazing. Now, Lauren, I, I know that it's not always easy and, and there's trials and there's roadblocks. What are, what are some of those roadblocks and trials that you've maybe had to work through in your career? I mean, obviously as an athlete, we deal with injuries all the time, but I think the biggest roadblock is, is generally in my mind, right? It's, it's self doubt. And I think hopefully everybody can, can connect with that. You know, sometimes you're just like, am I good enough? Am I working hard enough? Am I, you know, doing the right sport? Am I with the right organization? Um, and doubt is something that I deal with on a daily basis. I think that when people see that I've won a medal at the games and that I'm a world champion, I think the thought is, oh, I'm always confident. I always believe in myself. And that is not the case. I am 37 years old. I have a torn hip labrum. I'm competing against 22 year olds trying to go to my second, uh, second games. And, you know, it's, there's a lot of days where I feel like superhuman and then there's some days that i get out of bed and my back hurts and my hip hurts and my shoulder hurts and my neck hurts and so hopefully some of you on there can you know feel me on that one <laughs> um but yeah i just i think it's so important in whatever that you do to realize that doubt should not be the determining factor of whether or not you continue on whether or not you give your all to something you know i process my doubt and then I do the things that I know are going to make me successful. And that's by following a program that I know is tr true and tested and has been replicated time and time again, right? There, I push bobsleds basically for a living. And so the point is to push it fast. So I know you have to do sprint training. I know you have to do weightlifting. I know you have to do your rehab and your recovery. Just got out of the cold tub, which is why my hair is a little bit wet. Um, so, you know, I think self-doubt is something hopefully that everybody can relate to um and how you overcome it is by doing the things that people before you have done to be successful in whatever it is that you're doing and so i always say everybody can live their olympic moment oh i love that and and lauren we, we relate with you i mean self-doubt is a real thing for so many people i think the majority yeah. of people you know we that, that's just what we do it's in our nature to look outwardly and compare ourselves and see what other people are doing and and really are we good enough you know and that that's a question that you pose and so um you, you kind of talked about the programs and, and doing stuff that are tested and tried and true to get through those those moments of self of self doubt. Are there any other things that you do or advice you would give if if someone is struggling with self doubt or any other obstacle or roadblock that's that's in front of them? What would you suggest? Yeah, I would. I think I think it's important to remember that um, you know what you do is not necessarily who you are. So I say that because sometimes you're going to fail. Uh, I won world championships in 2020. And then last year, I didn't even make the world championship team. But you better believe I am trying to make the team in 2022 and represent my country again. So I think it's important that realizing that things don't always have to go your way every single time for what you're doing to be what you're meant to do. And I know that's a little convoluted, but I think it's it's important to learn from the self-doubt. Why do I feel this way about myself? Why do I feel this way about what I'm doing, right? And usually for me, when I am feeling like, oh, I hate bobsled or bobsled's not for me, because I feel that way sometimes, it's usually because I know I'm not in the shape that I wanna be and I'm not where I wanna be. And so instead of realizing that I need to, you know, just do the steps to get there, I internalize it all. And I turn it into this, well, this just isn't for me anymore. And and I love bobsled at the end of the day. I, I love what I do. I love, um, I think we have a clip that we may show. I love pushing a sled and I could push a sled all day, every day and love it. Um, but the second it comes to like measuring performance, that's where, 
you know, the self doubt creeps in because I'm like, well, have I done enough? Am I doing it the right way? There's no one way to do something, but there is things that are tried, true and tested. And so that's what I would say is, you know, you, you have to fall back on one, the people who know more than you and who know better, right? I have coaches, I have advisors. Um, and two, you have to persevere. You have to keep going. Um, you can't let one experience or one failure determine your entire, um, you know, story in an experience or a sport or, you know, and this, this is true for relationships, right? So I just think it's important to really just uh, stay the course but make sure that you're focused on the right things and focused on the people that can lead you in the right direction. Nice. Lauren, you're, you're dropping some serious knowledge. We need to write a book out of this. I love it. Let's uh, do it. Who, who we are today is not who we're going to be tomorrow. We, we truly are in the business mm -hmm. of becoming, yeah. right? It's all about where we're going. And, and these failures or these moments of inadequacies or, or self-doubt we can get through those. And you, and you talked a little bit about, you know, relying on, on people and your network and your coaches and, and family. Um, and, and we, we need to humble ourselves at time and ask for help when, when we need it. So I love it. Great, great advice. Um, so, so you mentioned, you know, you're, you're, you're preparing, you're trying to get ready for the next games. What, what is it that motivates you to continue to compete? Oh, what motivates me to continue to compete? I think it is, um, I want my story to be something that people can look at and say, I can be great too. Because whether I make it to the next games or not, I'm going to put my all into it. And whether I make it to the next games or not, I'm going to, I know my worth. My worth is not this medal. So it's very pretty, like it's very, very pretty and very heavy. Um, but my worth is is who I've become in the journey, right? You can say we're always evolving. Um, and, you know, I always say I became a whole human through this process because this process has been about, you know, I used to be the type of person that when things got hard, I would just quit. Um, I used to be the type of person that would, when I didn't do well, I would point fingers and blame others. Um, I used to be the type of person that I didn't even realize it was an ego thing, right? It wasn't about how I could be better, how I can learn better, how I could be better for others, how I could be of service to others. Um, it was all about, you know, how it appeared to others. And that's not living. Living is being imperfect. Like, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I have the most awesome bed head. Some people are like, I can't, I can't believe you're so brave to go on there with you know, no makeup and your hair all over the place. I'm like, why? We all wake up that way. I'm just as beautiful with or without my hair and makeup done, just like all of you, you know? And so that's what motivates me. What motivates me is the, that little kid who watches my story, that 30 year old you know, man or woman who watches my story, that 60 year old who is like, man, it's not too late for me to pivot and do something that just brings joy and sets my soul on fire and gives me purpose and passion. That's, that's what motivates me. It's at this point, it's not even about bobsled anymore. I'm so fortunate and I feel like it is my duty to, to pay it forward. And so my, uh, my, journey to the games and through sports is my way of showing the world what is possible when you really dig in, you know, you follow a program, you focus, you stay the course and you overcome. I love that. I, I love that your, your motivation is outwardly focused. You're focused on helping other people and that you can be an inspiration to them. Uh, yeah. So we know you're a great person. We know that you have a heart of gold, uh, a medal of silver, like what I did there. Um, yes. <laughs> uh, and, and so you, you have this heart of gold, and we just heard that from your previous answer. So I'm curious, what what charities or uh, humanitarian efforts are you a part of? Well, it's really cool. So my mom, first and foremost, is the executive director of uh, the Pasadena Senior Center. And so through her work there, um, I've learned a lot just about um, the struggles of aging 
right? In, in loneliness. And so I would say if you know seniors or older people, older uh, adults in your community, that's the appropriate way to say it, um, reach out to them. If you have a neighbor that you know is older and lives alone, um, reach out to them because they say that loneliness is worse than smoking 10 packs of cigarettes a day, which I don't smoke cigarettes, of course, but like that. So think of that. Like if you see someone who's lonely, um, reach out to them. Second uh, organization I love and work with is Classroom Champions. Um, this is a, an amazing organization that was actually started by a fellow Bob Slutter. He competed in the 2010 games, won gold. Um, he and his sister founded this organization. So they pair um athletes elite level athletes with uh classrooms of kids in underserved populations and we do social intellectual uh learning social emotional learning uh with them so we have different challenges we talk about perseverance we talk about teamwork we talk about acceptance we talk about diversity right that everybody's different and and that's what makes us great um so those are the two uh charities that i'm involved in uh, on a consistent basis. And then, um, yeah, those are my two favorite yeah. charities, I'd say. I love that. And that, that's, that's unique because you're, you're kind of on two ends of the spectrum there, right? You're, you're right? working with people who have been here a little bit longer and then you're influencing the younger generation, which is so yep. cool to kind of probably see that come full circle, full circle a little bit. So that, that's, mm -hmm. that's really exciting. Um, so you, you, you mentioned your, your mother and, um, you know, the, the organization that she's a part of and helping out with ha has yeah. she been a big inspiration in your life or is there someone else that you would dib as maybe your greatest inspiration to you? Yeah. I mean, I have the best parents in the entire world, like hands down, I will, you know, go to my grave saying that. You know, I, I, I love when people like, I hope I don't become like my mom or my dad. I'm like, I hope I become my parents. Um, they were incredible. They gave me the leeway to be who I wanted to be. You know, I've always been very outspoken. So they, they supported me through that. Uh, when I said, hey, mom and dad, I'm going to go quit my six-figure job to bobsled. My dad thought I was crazy. He still, he still thinks I'm a little crazy. Um, which is funny because he's a clinical psychologist. And then, you know, but they supported me through all of it. So I would say by far, uh, they are my biggest support system. But I am so blessed. I have so many amazing people in my life. My bobsled teammates, you know, really charted a course for me. Um, the women's bobsled has only been in the game since 2002. And the, the women, US women's team has won a medal in every single game since it's been an opportunity. And so, um, I have the most amazing role models, um, in my teammates, you know, in, in the space that I live in, there's so many elite athletes and we're, we're one big happy family. Um, so I just, you know, I'm so lucky to have so many mentors and just people in my life that are supportive of my dream. And that's, that's something really important. I think to touch on when you have goals and dreams, the best way to get there is to talk about them. Because you'd be surprised how many people will get on board to help you achieve your goals. I love that. And Lauren, I, I think that's great that you've had so many role models in your life and people who, who have inspired you that you are now that person for so many other people, right? And, and, and you know, maybe that's hard to, to, you know, really grasp sometimes, but just as you've had so many people that, have inspired you. You've inspired so many. Uh, you you've competed in, in various games, and you're a champion. You're a speaker. Uh, you, you spoke it at the TEDx in Pasadena, um, and and you've done just some incredible things in your life, really, so that people can look to you as an inspiration. So I love that. Um, before we get into one of our last questions, I do just want to shout this out, Lauren. We we have convention coming up. Will you be at convention? Of course, that's my favorite event of the season. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Okay, so you heard it here from Lauren herself. She will be in Salt Lake at our Evolve 2021 convention next month. We're just under a month now. So if you see Lauren, please reach out to her. I know she'd love to give you a hug or high five or whatever you guys are both comfortable with. But 
Uh, Lauren, we're excited to have you here in Salt Lake City in just under a month now. So one of the last questions I have for you is, is why doTERRA? What attracted you to doTERRA and kind of how did it all start this partnership? Yeah. Um, as an elite level athlete, I'm always looking for opportunities to, well, let me, let me, let me roll back. My mission is to change the world. Um, I've been so fortunate and I've happened upon so many amazing experiences. I've been to some of the best schools in the country. I've traveled the world. I've been able to represent my country. And so I feel like, you know, my duty is to now help change the world. And so my thing is, is I only want to work with organizations that have the same motto and intention. In the same vein, what goes into my body and what I'm around um, is important because I, as an elite level athlete, you get drug tested and they don't tell you when you're going to get drug tested. So everything that goes into my body has to be pure. So, you know, when I got to tour the factory and got to see that, you know, doTERRA really handles everything from harvesting to bottling to shipping. Um, that was huge because there's no, I don't have to think about when I'm brushing my teeth with my toothpaste in the morning or when I'm using my body wash or using my new leave-in conditioner, which heck yes for leave-in conditioner. Um, when I'm diffusing adaptive or copaiba, you know, all that stuff. Um, I don't have to worry about it. Also, if you haven't tried the new protein, yes, finally a protein that I actually, that actually tastes good. Cause I've, I've, I've used a lot of it. And usually it's too sweet. There's too many fillers. Um, and so I just, I vibe with the brand. I vibe with the mission, the vision. And I also just vibe with wellness advocates. I'm a huge fan of, um, you know, taking control of your financial future. That's huge. Like you are the, you are, you determine your, your future and your destiny and how you spend your time. And life is too short to do things that don't serve you. I always say life is too short to not include enough things in your life that don't keep you up at night and get you out of bed in the morning. And so, you know, the terror really just checks all the boxes for me. Um, and also I love when Emily makes me cry. So that's, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite. That's a way of doing that. She knows how to pull yeah. it the string. She makes you, she makes you cry. Uh, well, Lauren, you, you check all the boxes for us as well. We we love you. We're grateful you are a part of our doTERRA family. Uh, and we cannot thank you enough for for the time and the energy that, that you put into you know preparing yourself for this today to share with us a little bit more about who you are and how we can each individually be better and get through some of those obstacles and those trials and those those insecurities that we all definitely have at times. So Lauren, we want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we will look forward to seeing you and all of our listeners at our Evolve Connection or our Evolve Convention next month in Salt Lake. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time on the Performance Review. See you, everyone. Bye, everyone.